so in uh, risk calculation i am not going into the detail of the case control versus cohort study uh, we are just seeing the concept how to do this in jamovi maybe when we will conduct that epidemiological uh, sessions on these type of study design then we will elaborate more on the study design right now we are restricting only to the concept basic concept of relative risk and odds ratio so relative risk is basically it is also known as the risk ratio or rate ratio and alternatively we call it as a relative rate and it again measures the strength of association it is usually done in a incidence study or the cohort study where you have a group of people and a comparison group and you divide them on the basis of exposure like exposure versus no exposure of any risk factor and then you follow them up for the development of a particular outcome so you measure the risk of disease in exposed versus risk of disease in non exposed depending upon what exposure are you taking so in which type of study design we, we relatively use this so in cohort study like i said you start with the exposed and non exposed group and then as time passes you compare like few people they they develop the disease in the exposed group and they develop the disease in the non exposed so there is no outcome of interest in the beginning of observation but as we move ahead then there are some observations so we compare the incidence of outcome in uh, these two group of exposed and non exposed so this outcome status established twice at least so in the beginning also you you measure the outcome to see that they are without the outcome and then again after that uh, end of the study also you measure the outcome or till the time that outcome develops so basically it can be this relative risk it is basically measured in a type of prospective cohort study you can do it in the retrospective cohort study or it can have a combination of these two also so these are few example of prospective cohort study so maybe this you can see that this is a classical example of a nurses health study when 117000 nurses they were followed up and initially they had the risk factor they were divided with the risk factor and the risk factor was the obesity so obese and lean and then they followed up with the development outcome was compared and the outcome was cancer or the cardiovascular disease so at the baseline there was a collection of baseline data then there was a follow up period and then there was a determination of the outcome status this was a retrospective cohort study when uh, it was done classically as a employee of tire manufacturer so here all those employee they were divided on the basis so don't confuse this retrospective is not like a retrospective that case control here also you start with the exposure so the exposure like you have started with the exposure of this tire makers rubber exposed so the tire makers and the clerical staff this was like exposure tire maker and did not have the factor was the clerical staff and then they compared the incidence incidence of death so it requires much less time and the cost is much less than the prospective cohort study and then again the randomized control trial where you randomize uh, randomly assign treatment a and treatment b to the two group of people and then you compare the incidence so now what is the interpretation of relative risk so if the value of relative risk is equal to 1 we call it as a no association if it is more than 1 we call it as a positive association or risk and if it is less than 1 we call it as a protective association and how do we define relative risk reduction so if you uh, subtract 1 from this relative risk and multiply it by 100 it is known as the relative risk reduction depending on the sign if the relative risk value is greater than the one then the participants in the exposed group are at increased risk of developing the disease and if it is less than one the participants in the exposed group have a reduced risk of developing the disease now what are what are the underlying assumptions for this relative risk so the underlying assumptions are first assumption is there should be one dichotomous variable which is like nominal it could be nominal or ordinal and one dichotomous dependent variable assumption second is it should have a independence of observation and assumption three is that uh, the study design we have talked about the study design and here i have discussed all these cohort studies so i am just skipping now coming to the odds ratio odds ratio is usually done in the case control study or analytical cross section study 
So the underlying assumptions of odds ratio is like in this case, there is a one dichotomous dependent variable and one dichotomous independent variable. Uh, uh, just forgive us for this mistake because here you can make one as an independent and there is an independence of observation and as assumption three is that again it is uh, usually assigned uh, done in an analytical type of cross-section study or a case control study like uh, in this case we select sample from population and we measure all variable uh, only at once and at the same time point this is example of analytical cross-sectional and in a case control study, we have cases and we have a equal number of controls, maybe, or if we, you can have maybe one is to two, one is to three, or one is to four, depending on your requirement. And then you see the status of the uh, risk factor, whether they were exposed or unexposed to a particular risk factor. And then you make the two by two table and classify it. So again, the this odds ratio is again, the odds of exposure is same. If it is one, we say that there is a uh, risk is same in both. Rather, no, so no risk is there, no association between the disease and risk factor. And if it is more than one, we say that the odds of exposure among cases, it is greater than among control. And if it is less than one, then we say that the odds of exposure in cases, it is less than among the controls. So now coming to the question. So for demonstration, I will demonstrate this odds ratio and relative risk. So if you, the first is the uh, risk estimation is the odds ratio. So if you want to determine whether the smoking status has any association with the oxygen requirement at admission, and if it is associated with what uh, amount of this association. So I have to uh, do the odds ratio between smoking status and the oxygen requirement at the time of admission. So I'll go back to this data set. Again, the options are same. If you see, I'll go, this is the data. So, so I will go to this analyze. Again, this is the frequency. Here you can see it will be like contingency table only. But here you can see, you can see that this is the uh, odds ratio and relative risk. So for odds ratio, maybe oxygen requirement versus uh, smoking status. So smoking will be an independent. So I have done this smoker as a row. And this column is the oxygen requirement. So oxygen requirement, severity, oxygen one. So this is oxygen one. Uncheck this chi square. Then you can click this odds ratio. You can click this row wise percentages also because in two by two table you have to make the row wise percentages. So here you can see the risk is 0.461. And if you see just before you see the risk and you have to see whether it is significant or not, but since it is crossing one, it is not significant. This odds ratio with its 95% confidence interval. If you focus on this two by two table, can you see here that 31.1%. So this is the oxygen requirement, no NES. And this is smoker, no. So if I focus on this, yes. So maybe if you see here, just a so 17.2% of people who are smoker, they are requiring the oxygen. Whereas the non-smoker, they are requiring uh, more uh, like 31.1 percent of the people they are requiring oxygen so it's the other way around that's why this odds ratio is the odds so it tells you the reference category is the lower one that means it tells you the odds of oxygen requirement in the smoker as compared to the non-smoker because non-smoker has been taken as a zero category so it tells you the odds of oxygen requirement 
in smoker as compared to non smoker you can calculate also like what will be the odds of oxygen requirement in case of a smoker all of you please calculate what will be the odds of oxygen requirement in case of a smoker oxygen requirement one is yes and zero is no so all of you please write in the chat box odds of oxygen requirement in case of smoker it will be 10 by 48 can we take this 10 so it is the 10 by 48 similarly the odds of oxygen requirement in non smoker will be 38 by 84 and if you take the ratio of these two values it will come to 0.461 okay and this is the 95% confidence interval since it is crossing one you can say that it is not significant now coming to the relative risk so uh, in uh, spss both these values come together but here you can choose a option of clicking either the odds ratio or the relative risk so for relative risk i started with exposure status and the exposure status was the steroid so the person who was taking steroid at the time of admission and then the outcome is the maybe uh, what is what was the outcome whether it was discharge or death so in that case what i'll do i'll shift this to so this was the steroid so in row i'll move this steroid and outcome i have moved here to the column and again you can see the status so you can say the people who were taking steroid 48% of the people died whereas 4.5 sorry 4.8% death was only 4.8% whereas the people who were not taking steroids it was 18.6% and i have not clicked that relative risk so this relative risk value is 0.855 so this relative risk is the relative risk of not requiring Uh, i mean getting uh, not no uh, getting discharge who were taking steroid so this 0.855 and it, this was significant because it is not crossing one and you can calculate also with this 2 by 2 table this relative risk and odds ratio so the risk of death in case of person who is not taking steroid will be 22 divided by 118 and the risk of death in people who are taking steroid will be 3 by 62 so if you calculate this it will come and again you have to see in this case it gives you with the higher category this relative risk so you can calculate this and you can see this is a homework for all of you so this 81.4 will be in the numerator and 95.2 will be in the denominator and so this gives you the relative risk of death in uh, people who were taking uh, discharge okay mm -hmm.